Welcome. This is Shakti Karola Nevrin and I live on Maui. So that's why I do most of my work online. So today we're going to talk about the new moon and uh, depending on what sign it is, it will start a whole new circle of emotional maturation. And depending on where that's happening in your chart, in your personal birth chart, it will help you to start that process on your own. So if you hang in there, go to the end of the video, you will get access to your free birth chart and then you can get very specific with the more general information I'm intending to give you today. Welcome to my new moon video about Aquarius. And uh, yes, a new moon will be important and it's good to know about what to expect for all of us. But then, of course, it depends how it uh, uh, per percolates into your own chart and what it activates there. And also, uh, if you have your moon and your birth chart in Aquarius or any other planet, sun, ascendant, other planets, this video will be of uh, importance and interest for you. So this new moon is happening at 19 degrees of Aquarius, February 8th, 2016 at 6.38 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you have to correlate it to wherever you live when it's happening there. So we will discuss, therefore, the Aquarius archetype and personality. And at the end, I will give you very practical suggestions how you can take advantage of the Aquarian energies and how to ride the, the wave, as I call it. What else is going on? The Chinese year, the year of the yang, fire, monkey, begins at the same day as the new moon. So the fire monkey uh, symbolizes intelligence, creativity, as well as impulsiveness and opportunism. So uh, we can see that in monkeys, that uh, they're pretty smart. So, so that's happening simultaneously. And then the Jupiter retrograde in Virgo just started in January 7th uh, at 22 degrees Virgo has gone all the, back, uh, all the way back to 13 degrees uh, and turning direct May 9th. So that's kind of the backdrop. And uh, Jupiter in Virgo is about really making up our mind what it takes for us to be healthy, to have a sense of well-being. And Jupiter as a big benefactor will help us by giving us second chances. That's what's usually happening in a retrograde phase. And then, of course, we have the full moon coming up also in Virgo, uh, end of the month, February 22nd, which I will prepare an extra video for, for you. So let's move on. A little bit about me. My name is Shakti Karola Nevrin, and uh, I'm very passionate about astrology. So I want everybody to have their own birth chart and uh, throw a love stone report on top of it when you sign up on my website. And I truly believe that you are born to thrive. So uh, as an astrologer for almost 40 years now, uh, I really, really, truly love astrology and know what it can do for you. And it is your astrological blueprint. And uh, with that, it's your road to karmic healing and true transformation and really um, take the high road of all the potentials you're bringing with you as a soul to this lifetime. So as an astrologer, I'm deeply committed to help you to understand yourself and uh, integrate all these uh, forecast readings I'm doing from that point. It seems like that the full moon is often getting a lot of more attention than the new moon, but actually I think um, the new moon is maybe even more important because it's the beginning of a new cycle. It's an opportunity to embody the essence uh, of the zodiac sign in which it actually happens and begins for all of us. 
So around the new moon, it's an optimal time to reflect on where you are and where you want to go next and what you want to create next. So uh, to, to set yourself up consciously for that emotional maturation around the new moon will help things to uh, move along uh, more fluidly for you. So, so pay attention to the new moon. I will discuss the Aquarius personality and uh, what that means for you. So the Aquarius is the third air sign and is ruled, ruled by Uranus, the uh, uh, transpersonal planet. But the, uh, the, in the old astrology, it used to be thought as ruled by Saturn. So nowadays, we kind of uh, look at both planets when we're going to get some in-depth uh, information. What you want to know about the Aquarian personality, it's uh, the outsider. The outsider gathering experience outside consensual reality. And uh, as theoretically as that might sound, imagine you being the one who is very different, alienated from uh, other people around you, thinking, working, acting differently. And through the history, that was often uh, very dangerous. I mean, we still kill people out there in the world because they believe in, in a different God, they, they have... Uh, different ways to to be in the world so there seem to be a need for the mainstream for the individuals to to conform and the Aquarian personality doesn't so uh, the person is learning about to walk that boundary of being different Therefore, Aquarius is the sign of the daring visionary, the revolutionary, the rebel, the nonconformist. So here we have the home of people who ultimately have to learn to walk after their own inner drummer, I call it sometimes. So you have to learn to listen to that inner guidance coming forward from your soul. Uh, over that was what good meaning friends and neighbors and people are suggesting you to do with your life. So with, what, with whatever planets you have in Aquarius, you are invited to think out of the box, to think out of the mainstream paradigm. So with the new moon in Aquarius, that's an invitation to kind of get a little more emotional freedom from the box. We, we all have a box we live in, but uh, it's an invitation to spread our wings a little more. So the Aquarian personality values independence and freedom. So uh, it thrives through overcoming the need for approval. And I believe that's a big one because, of course, we all have a certain need for fitting in and being reflected. So if you have planets in Aquarius, you're learning about uh, overcoming that need for approval. And with that comes a certain freedom. So like every other sign, of course, Aquarius has a shadow. And for Aquarius, it's... Uh, being associated, <clears throat> feeling separated. Uh, so it can come with a sense of coldness and aloofness, which is usually a survival strategy. So um, here we have the, the ice princess, the, the one who uh, makes a virtue out of not fitting in. So again, you are the duck who stands out, looks different, and that carries the seed of genius. So how to ride the wave with Aquarian projects this month has to do with that. So it's about uh, finding that seed of genius inside of yourself. And uh, we all have that. We all have an Aquarian sign in our, our chart, even if we don't have planets in it. So this month, it's really about 
trusting that, be colorful, be weird, be different. So there's a seed of genius which wants to, to flower here. Also, another project for you is all around authenticity. So it's about following your own heart, following your own guidance. Be playful, dance in the street, do things which you love to do. The third area is the area of individuation and following your soul's guidance. So uh, for that, we need to calm down. We need those moments of stillness. Uh, it can just be a formal meditation. It can just be sitting, gazing at the ocean. It can be sitting with a cup of tea and just allowing your mind to, to slow down from those super busy days we all have. So only in that moments of stillness, of, of slowing down, we can hear our soul speaking to us. We can hear our higher guidance. So this is something you want to uh, create more space for this month. Another aspect is that you want to find your tribe. Of course, it's not an easy journey to find yourself always in a situation where you don't fit in, where you feel you're different, nobody understands you, and then you feel lonely and unappreciated. So uh, it is very helpful for Aquarian people and the Aquarian spirit to find like-minded souls, people who are as weird and queer and different and colorful and genius as you are. So make an effort this month to, to go out, to reach out, to meet new people. The question to ask always is, how can you grow to a new level of success and fulfilling and a more meaningful life to basically enjoy yourself more in what you're doing? So in order to do that, this new moon gives you the chance to, to try out new things, to do things different than you usually do things. So if you keep that at the back of your mind, I think it's going to be a good month for you. So break your own patterns. Uh, expand out of your box of comfortability. So, so grow out of your comfort zone. And go out, make new friends, uh, uh, find your tribe, find other uh, uh, people just like you are with similar goals and intentions. So that is a good way to not feel lonely and, and separate it from others. So this time I picked a more unusual stone for this new moon as a true birthstone for Aquarius. So first of all, uh, as you know, every gemstone has a certain signature when we look at it from an astrological perspective. And that is created out of the chemical composition, the crystal structure, the color, the light reflection. So Labradorite represents Mercury, Moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. So with a new moon in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus and uh, co-ruled by Saturn, I thought this was a beautiful stone to present you to you this month. So first of all, you might have seen a Labradorite. <clears throat> it looks a little bit like a moonstone. So it's kind of what we call a, a feldspar cousin of the moonstone. So uh, chakra-wise, it connects the heart and the throat chakra. So what it does because of that, it helps to make a connection between the heart and our inner world of feelings. And then it brings the energy up into the throat chakra and helps us to express those feelings and with that our own inner truth. So, uh, first of all, we really need to be in contact with those feelings to then be able to express and uh, uh, bring them forward. So, Labradorite helps to unveil those 
emotional needs and helps us to connect. And here is a connection to the moon. It's a deeply nurturing, nourishing stone. So it also is therefore very balancing into the emotional body. So it's really a wonderful stone. It's not an expensive stone. You can have a big piece of it and just uh, have it in your pocket or put it on your body uh, for some meditation practice. So it's a wonderful stone to play with and uh, find out what you think about it and what your experience is with it. So let me know. So if you haven't done so yet, now it's a good time to sign up for your free subscription on YouTube. Or if you really want to keep informed, you might uh, want to sign up for my newsletter. And there you will get access to your free horoscope, your birth chart, and your free love stone report. And please, if you like my video, like it and leave me a comment. So uh, it helps me to keep this going. So I know there's actually somebody out there who appreciates what I'm doing. So thank you for connecting with me. If you're really interested in astrology, I like you to know that I do teach astrology classes for beginners once in a while. So uh, it could be something you're interested to learn for your own inner process or to start a new career. Uh, either way, uh, connect with me, send me an email and I will let you know about the specifics and when the next training is going to start. As an evolutionary astrologer with 37 years of experience, I'm very passionate about astrology. You might be able to tell. And I truly believe that you are born to thrive and that your astrological blueprint is there to help you with your karmic healing and a profound transformation. And it's all happening in our consciousness. So if you're interested to have a look at your personal chart with me, give me a call. I'm in Hawaii. 808-878-8182 or head over to my website and connect with me there MauiAstrologyReading.com Thanks for coming and listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like me and uh, I hope to see you soon again. And as we say here on Maui, Aloha! seminerimizi canlı olarak mobil uygulamamız üzerinden yapıyoruz.